think through, you know, why coming back and, and the, the whole process and how how late it was and just everything that went into, you know, coming back here. Yeah, I think the itch kind of started at Golden Goggles. Nate and I were there, uh, got to present awards. And we're reading the teleprompter talking about being in a football stadium. We're like, that sounds really cool. Like, let's let's try it. So it kind of started there. And then uh, I, I was curious how fast I could go with almost no training. It wasn't that fast. Yeah. So I was like, oh no, I gotta start swimming uh, a little more seriously. And it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, I was lifting a lot, but not swimming afterward just to stretch it out. And uh, it was, so I just added a little more swimming and a little more intensity. And, uh, and I try to pretty fast. So and kind of that sprint training right. that Brent Hawk's always talking about, sprint right. revolution, kind of tried it out, really liked it, and ended up going kind of fast. And what does it mean to you to be able to go fast enough to be here? And we're seeing, you know, uh, Gabriel Rose had a big meet, Brie Larson's here, you know, like it, it's, there's a lot of people doing, you know, kind of the same thing. Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of people have the capacity, of like, uh, financial situation or kid situation job uh so I, I i think more people would right. <laughs> so i just happen to be in the situation that i could uh put a little more time on myself it feels selfish but uh once i went to time it felt really good and uh, it's it's cool to know that at 39 my body definitely still has it it's just what are you willing to put into it so it was, it was you know, really fun to make the team, really fun just to know that I get to swim here, hang out with a lot of friends, walking on the pool deck, saying hi to all the coaches and older athletes. Uh, it just felt kind of like a homecoming. And just to be in this environment without that much pressure is super refreshing and just a really great time. Watching finals and 100 back last night, I was like, kind of want to be there. And then like when they're stepping up behind the blocks and I saw the faces and that a little bit of you know pre-race anxiety, I was like, I'm, I'm happy up here. Uh, and the 53 is kind of a different situation where that's just fun to see if I, I'm kind of going for almost the best time and it's a big time drop, but just uh, with the kind of sprint focus and uh, yeah, type of training, it, it's, it's possible. That's really fun. And I've always been addicted to improvement and I had improvement in the freestyle. And I don't think I was going to get in the back row. So that's kind of how the event choice came about. How does the mental component differ now compared to previous trials, or does it differ at all? Oh, it's very different. Uh, previous trials, it was my livelihood. That's That was my job, um, and I felt like a lot of people depended on me, not just financially, but the support system. It's really great to have an awesome support system, but then you feel like you owe everyone that supported you, and you really don't want to let them down. So right now, it's, you know, my... My uh, business, the Mont Valley Swim School, is kind of giving me more time to train and my life, taking more uh, mom responsibilities, family. But really, it's, it's just here to have fun and uh, let's go as fast as I can, but with no expectations or pressure. I mean, little expectations, but just the fun kind. Does that feel good to have? It's really good. Like, I'm walking around talking to people before I, I make sure I'm sitting or napping or sleeping. And now I'm like, hanging out with my parents when they came in today. Uh, and really, yeah, just enjoying myself without being careful because swimmers are fragile during the taper moments you don't get to enjoy yourself too much so we're not worrying about that so much and it's really great yeah well, great. no one came <laughs> we we were thinking about having a wife and kids come they stayed at home uh they're seven four and one my one-year-old doesn't love flying yet and it's just we're we're traveling in July, they're like, well, do this for me. And it's kind of been a reunion for me anyway, where, I mean, Annie knows a lot of people, but to take care of the kids and have kind of the, the relation catch-ups that I wanted was going to be hard, so it, was, it just made more sense coming in. So they're supporting me for more. Talk about how there's more pressure on the other side. What would it mean if you end up qualifying? <laughs> I don't know if my life let me go. <laughs> um, no, it would be, it'd be incredible. And I, I think maybe, like, Gabby's cheer when she went out for semifinals, it was, like, one of the loudest ones of the meet. It was like, so people were rooting for the old guys just to see what you can do. Like, hey, you're like, almost 40 and you're able to push your body to that level. I think everyone can kind of then picture themselves. Like, hey, what could I do if I kind of was you know, eating or training or whatever uh, a little more carefully than I so, yeah, I'm not counting anything completely out, but uh, I'd probably be upset that I didn't try that hard and I made it. Like, I'd be like, well, this isn't even fair. Um, 
But yeah, no, I, the love of the sport goes a long way. I think just having a, a great love and uh, just the excitement to be here instead of stress probably, probably does end up helping a little bit. What's the, at your age, and you've been here so many times now, what, what's the difference seeing all the young bucks trying to do what they do? So I've always thought, like, the young bucks don't know what they're doing yet exactly, the extent of it, the, the gravity. And so they kind of just go through, barrel through, make Olympic teams. And I always feel more for the veterans, especially people going for their third Olympics. You have to be on your game a very long time. There's pressure stacks each time. So I, I kind of, uh, I always rooting for the older guys. Yes, because I know them, because I know that the pressure is more. For the young guys, it's great seeing what you can do with no expectations or little. You know, they just have innocent, pure goals, and they just want to swim fast. They're not trying to, you know, get a bigger contract. They're not trying to sign a new deal. They just want to swim as fast as they can because they love swimming fast. And right. so I, I love rooting for everyone there. And it's, a, it's a different sense of gravity. What does it mean for you now to look back on like Ryan Murphy and Hunter Armstrong making the team to look back on like that backstory legacy that you have to be a part of? Yeah, I, I'm rooting for them big time. I, Ryan looked so good, uh, especially semifinals. I haven't seen him swim that big and strong in a while. I think he's going to rest and go super fast. Hunter just had a really great Hunter free too. This Hunter back, I think it's going to come down. But the legacy, it, it's the world's getting faster. It's harder to, we won gold for a very long time, but the world's kind of caught up to the U.S. There's, you know, YouTube's out there, everyone knows everything. <laughs> um, but no, it's really, they're, we're in great hands with them. The leadership from Murphy's astounding. He's just an incredible guy, incredibly strong leader. Uh, professional, charismatic. He's got all the traits that you're looking for, and then to uh, to know that he's he's kind of protecting or uh, yeah, upholding the backstroke legacy for the U.S. It feels great. You can't, couldn't be in better hands. What do you think of the stadium? This is incredible, uh, and that's what I kind of how this all this conversation started is. Nathan and I just want to swim in a football, it's a football stadium. Like this is amazing. Everyone I've talked to loves the event, loves the crowd. Uh, it's a home run, and uh, I'm so glad I get to be here and be a part of it. Actually, Nathan texted me because he, he ended up doing other stuff instead of the 50. But he's like, oh, man, I wish I, I went for the 50 to, to swim in this pool. Uh, hey, four more years, buddy. We can go back and go. We can do it. Let's go. Are you going to hang around? Is this going to be part of a long term? I was, I'm going to see. This was great. Uh, the setup was amazing. Just having the time to focus on myself in the pool for an hour a day made me so happy. So if I can kind of uh, get everyone on board, once every four years, it give me about six months uh, of prep time. I might need more the next time. I might need more eight months. But uh, I mean, kind of, it really ramped up at the end, got serious at the very end. Uh, yeah, I would love to keep going. It's uh, Ben Rose, just like, that's, she looks fantastic. She swam great. Uh, and I think people are excited to see what your body can do if you have the time or the circumstance where you can kind of go for it. It's not it's a big part of me. You can't turn it off. Like watching that hundred backstroke on my cool. Like I wanna be in there. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm happy. No, I wanna be in there. And for the fifty three, same thing. I'm like, okay, I don't care so much about my legs, but if I see a seat, I'm gonna sit down and try to you know, I try to relax. So and I'm watching the film stroke, and I'm thinking, I'm, yes, I would like to do as well as I can. I, that's, but that's in everything I do. If I go play pickleball, I'm going to want to be the best pickleball player in the race. I'm going to watch all the videos. I'm going to focus in. I did a little tournament, and I was like, adrenalized like it was before the race. It's just, I think, how some of us are built. We just love those moments, want to take advantage of, of any time where you can compete and perform your best. And uh, that's, I can't, can't stop that. I'm trying to be relaxed, but. I'm, I'm already getting the butterflies a little bit, and I love it. I love the whole preparation. I love uh, the anticipation of the race, and I'm gonna love the race. And this time, just happens where the outcome isn't as significant as before, so it's, it's kind of more fun of a lead up. Last question. It's it's not too much race strategy. You just don't breathe. You don't have to worry about walls messing up turns. You just jump off that block as fast as you can. It's so pure, raw speed and power. Something I've always loved is actually one of my best events in high school and I kind of 
got drawn away from it over the years, it's hard. It's hard to be a 53 specialist. You have to be so on, so many things you got to work on strength, and you have to have perfect stroke. You can't get away with, you know, horrible arms because you have a great kick. You need to have everything dialed in and connected together. And so that's been super fun to work my freestyle like I haven't before. Uh, I work with Rick DeMont. He's, he's like, I pull him out of retirement once a week to kind of tune me up uh, working together, and it's been incredible just to learn more about the stroke and, and how different it is from my backstroke. And so that's fun, and the improvement's fun. It doesn't hurt that much, so that's fun. Uh, yeah, and yeah, almost, almost. Love almost it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.